Hello everyone. Recently, there has been a Synapse 4 update that has resulted in lots of keybinds for the Razer Taurus Pro to be broken. Even if they show that they are, are keybinded or assigned to something, uh, it just no longer works, regardless of whether or not you rebind them, restart it. Nothing seems to have fixed it. And judging by multiple other posts, Razer support has been anything but helpful. However, I have managed to fix it on mine without having to revert back to Synapse 3 or somehow finding a way to install an old version of Synapse 4. Uh, it's relatively easy, so I will do my best to walk you guys through what I did. Um, it's been quite a while since I've made a tutorial video of any kind probably a decade by now so please bear with me and i will do my absolute best to walk you guys through this uh, so the first thing that you're going to need or more like the only extra thing that you're going to need is a very small program known as device cleanup tool uh, this is the web page where you will find it i will put this link either down in the comment of this video or in the description tab bar, whatever you want to call it, on, on the Reddit post. But you're going to go here. Uh, this is the web page that is going to pop up. And you're going to scroll down where it says device cleanup tool and whatever version there might be. Um, it basically always stays the same. It's always going to look like this. Uh, so. I'm sure you I'm pretty sure you'll be fine if you're watching this sometime later in the future and there's a new there's a new version. Uh, I suspect that all of us are running a 64 bit system. So we're going to download the device cleanup x64 zip. Click on it, place it wherever you'd like to place your downloads folder uh, or wherever you like to place your downloads. For me, it's going to be in the downloads folder. Once that's downloaded, you can close your browser window. You're not going to need that anymore. You don't have to keep this program on your computer. Um, I like keeping it on there permanently just because every once in a while I, I do need it. Uh, so here is what I do to keep it permanently on my computer and I don't have to mess with it later. So all you want to do is just right click it in whatever downloads folder you have. Extract all verify where you're extracting it to. I'm gonna extract it in that same exact place. Click extract. Then I'm gonna to go to my local disk over here. I'm gonna to go to program files and I'm going to make a new folder. Continue. Renaming it device cleanup. You're going to open up the extracted folder. You're going to grab just the exe. This this uh, text file right here is just sort of like a change log or like a little description of what else it does. You're just going to grab it. You're going to move it or copy it over to the, to the new folder that you just made. Uh, you will need administrator privileges or administrator access to do this. So just keep that in mind. Click continue. I did not mean to do that. Sorry. Once, once it's in there, what I like to do is I like to create a shortcut on the desktop. Click new. So go to the desktop, right click any empty space, click new. I'm going to click shortcut. This little window is going to pop up. Let me close this. This little window is going to pop up. Right click the .exe file that you moved into the program file folder or wherever it is that you want to keep the main exe. And we are going to click copy as path right here. Once you do that, paste that into that little text bar, get rid of the quotation marks and click next. Then we can name the shortcut, 
just like keeping it as device cleanup finish and it'll be right there or wherever it is that you'd like to place it on your desktop just to be absolutely sure that everything gets done properly i always run this in administrator mode so we're going to right click it click on properties as you saw me do just there right click properties click on advanced run as administrator that basically means anytime that you open that program up from the shortcut it's going to run it as if you're an administrator always like running it on maximize window click apply click okay we're going to leave that there for now the next thing that we're going to do is that we are going to open up razor synapse um i don't know about some of you guys i have what i would say is a decent amount of razor peripherals i am a razor fanboy unfortunately uh, and what we're going to do is that we're going to disconnect every single one of these. Now, as far as it goes for people that have a desktop computer and have what I'm going to call hardwired components. So the Razer power supply, any Razer motherboard, uh, Razer fans, the Razer AIO coolers, Razer Chroma RGB controllers that, you know, are inside of your case. Um, I'm going to say don't disconnect those. Uh, I honestly don't know what that what that would do if it would mess anything else up because I use a laptop, so everything is just USB. So anything that's on the outside and is USB connected, what you're going to want to do is just disconnect all of it. So mouse and dock, gone. The mouse pad, what did I disconnect there? That was, okay. The mouse pad keyboard and of course the razor tartarus disconnect everything that is connected to the outside of your computer headsets whatever uh, that random razor wireless chroma charging pad that's kind of obscure disconnect it all of it then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to click here on device and modules you're going to see all the disconnected razor devices that are registered or linked to this computer slash this account. And you're gonna remove all of them one by one. Delete this. Delete this. Delete this. Delete this. Delete this. And delete that. Once you clear all of the ones that you have disconnected, you can close out of Razor Synapse and you're going to want to open the device cleanup.exe file that we just downloaded. This is probably going to pop up. It's just Windows Defender because like it says, it's an unrecognized app and it doesn't want you to do anything or run anything that it can't completely verify. But from my personal experience, this app has been completely safe and it hasn't done anything that it shouldn't do. I'm gonna click uh, whatever that little, those little words said over there, can't remember, sorry. Run anyway, user account control, click yes to run it, and then this is gonna pop up. Now these are all of the devices that have ever been connected to your computer and at the current moment are not connected. You guys can't see me, but I'm using air quotes. So these are all of your ghost devices. And what we're gonna do is that we're just gonna get rid of all of them. So you're gonna click Control A, and that's gonna select everything. Then you can click Delete. There's a slight chance that an error will pop up saying that it can't find a certain device and it can't delete it. If that pops up and there are still multiple devices listed underneath, just click OK or click Ignore, whatever the, whatever the little prompt says, and then just select all of them again. And while still holding down the Control key on your keyboard, click the very top one, because that's usually the one that it can't delete, and then just repeat it again. And then you can exit out, open it back up, and you should be able to get rid of that extra device. If you can't get rid of it, that's pro that's usually 
perfectly fine. Don't worry about it. You got rid of most of them and that's what matters. Once you do that, you're going to want to reboot your computer. Do not connect anything while it's rebooting or after it's rebooting. Do not do that yet. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And now, once your system has finally rebooted, you can go back into Razer Synapse. Of course, there's not gonna be any devices listed. And what you're gonna to wanna to do is one by one, you're going to plug in your Razer devices and wait for the system or wait for the Synapse app to fully install them. What I mean by this, we're gonna start with the Razer Tartarus. Plug that one in. Wait for it to be detected. Sometimes that might happen. I'm actually not sure what's going on. If that happens, uh, what we can try doing is right clicking and just exiting all apps. And we're gonna try to run them again. So a little bit of non-scripted troubleshooting. Run Razor Synapse, there we go, it pops up. Click on it. These are the keybinds that I have for mine. Uh, I don't use it for productivity. I just use it for playing Fortnite. Um, and the, the up function on the D-pad, I have it binded to B. So just to be sure that it works. Currently using that keybind and it is working. So that is how I solved it. Um, that's everything that I did and it worked afterwards. Not sure if it'll get rid of your keybinds by doing that. Uh, if I remember correctly, it didn't, as you saw, the keybinds were still there even after removing it from the devices and modules. Uh, once you, once you get that working, you should be good to go. However, uh, I have to stress, please install them one by one. So. If you are installing your headset or your keyboard or anything else, uh, let it install. It will probably ask you to reboot the device, uh, to reboot your system. Go ahead and do that as many times as it takes, just for the sake of making sure that everything will work properly. So don't plug in all six of them and then wait for them to all install and then reboot it. Do one by one. Uh, the other thing that I've seen that has helped me not have to deal with certain things not being detected is not plugging your peripherals into different USBs. I understand that, you know, not everybody's situation is the same. You're maybe constantly having to move US, USB devices around on your ports, but something that has helped is always plugging them in into the same USB port. Um, Sometimes what that'll end up doing if you plug them into different USB ports at different times is that it, that will create different ghost devices and that will usually mess up uh, how Razer Synapse detects it. I don't like it. I'm not saying it's okay. Um, I do believe that this software 
is very, very buggy for a lot of people. And um, I've quite genuinely had to go to great lengths to make sure that I avoid those bugs. And this has been probably the only time that I have ran into a big major issue. And hopefully this helps you guys fix it. I will do my best to answer any questions that you guys have in the comments. I will either be posting this on a YouTube channel that I will create brand new and then uh, post the link on the Reddit post, or I will try to upload this video into an actual Reddit post. Uh, we'll see how that goes. But yes, that should fix, that should fix it and hopefully maybe any other issues that you guys are having. So I hope this video really helped you guys. Have a good one.